Good. So today we're going to cover um, uh, deterministic wallets um, and the SF Bitcoin devs, um, the deterministic wallet project. Um, this project started off last week Sunday. We're in Sydney. What the hell is it? Oh, there he is. Good. Good. Uh, and um, uh, it has um, have uh, Larry, who's been a contributor, um, and Srinivasan as well. So we're going to walk through this um, and talk about why it's the hottest, coolest project. Marco, I love you, man, but this, this wallet's hotter. <laughs> um, Marco has also worked on a wallet project. But I want to walk through why this wallet project is actually pretty hot and why the people who are not here are missing out because this is actually going to be super cool. All right? um, so uh, I'm going to start talking about why we even did this project. Um, so, if, oh, by the way, I put this presentation up today, so if you see any spelling mistakes, you can point it out, uh, please, because I don't think I spell checked. Um, also, please ask any questions in between while we're doing this. This is totally fine. Um, this is the hottest project in Bitcoin right now today. If anybody tells you there's a better project, tell them you don't know what they're talking about. This is it. Uh, and when we start with why, so um, we wanted to build, you know, so I wanted to build, and, and I talked to Sydney about this, building our own web wallet for future projects. Um, it's surprisingly enough, it's very hard to get good, web, you know, good wallet software um, that you can fork. And um, I wanted to have wallet software that I could get public addresses, we can send money to, um, we could use it on testnet. Um, Sydney always says, Tarek, you gotta use testnet to test. Um, a lot of developers in Bitcoin don't use tests um, to test. Um, and we wanted a base wallet so I could build cool new applications. You guys may already know, I work on the Common Party Protocol, um, I work on gold coins, silver coins, and precious metals, and many of our customers want a wallet to be able to see their coins, but we don't have one. Um, and being able to prepare one was, was really cool. A base wallet, we can build cool new apps on it. Um, we didn't want to raise the wheel, uh, because we thought that would be a waste of time. We wanted to move really, really fast, because everything in Bitcoin time was fast. But um, we really also wanted to take advantage of Sydney's HelloBlock.io. And you guys may not know about HelloBlock.io, but it's like some of the hottest stuff um, that is in Bitcoin today that has not really been marketed. And uh, we might have Sydney come up here and tell us a little bit more about how we might use it, but I'll get on there. But so it's a big problem, and I know a lot of other devs have this problem, right? I mean, how many of you guys have your own web wallet software anyway? In a repo, GitHub. Uh, wallet software? Your own web wallet software. Well, web wallet blockchain. Yeah. You know what I mean, though? To build on. Do you have one? No. Exactly. So I know most of us don't have it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we said, okay, let's go find a web wallet that we can fork. Um, and we found Carbon Wallet. Uh, I found Carbon Wallet because I'm aware that uh, some people have been talking about this wallet as a basis for forking. Uh, so this wallet was, uh, it's currently online. You can go to uh, Carbon Wallet, I think, .io. And um, it uses a deterministic wallet. So somebody had already implemented a deterministic wallet. And we thought, all right, let's. Uh, look at this one and see if we can use it. So the cool thing about Carbon Wallet, um, it is fully client-side um, and browser security using Bitcoin GS Lib. Uh, it's a deterministic wallet, which is also awesome. It doesn't require Bitcoin D instance to run. Um, and it uses Bit32. So we're going to talk about Bit32, and I might even have Tim come up and uh, tell us a little bit about it, if he's comfortable with it. Sure. I still can't explain it properly. It's really hard. Um, we wanted a wallet that was JavaScript all the way, right? Um, JavaScript on the client. We have one line which we can go through. We didn't need any server backups, um, but you can always log in with the same 12 word passphrase and get the same addresses. And it was open source and ready to form. So this is the hotness. And we said, okay, let's do Carver Wallet. But it has BIP32, right? And BIP32 is what makes this wallet super cool, the deterministic wallet. Um, and BIP32 is a it was started uh, was an idea that was written up by Gregory Maxwell, one of the uh, Bitcoin core devs, um, and we wanted a way to create um, a lot of private, public private key pairs. We want to do it fast. Um, we want to use a 12-word passphrase for generating the initial 20, 128 bits of entropy. Um, it allows us to create something called a master node, um, child keys, and all sorts of crazy stuff. But I'm going to say, Tim, do you feel comfortable talking about the 32 and how it works since you worked on it quite a bit? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, come on up. Okay. Everybody, this is Tim. <laughs> well, well, how does it work? What is um, it? Yeah, well, first, I'm Tim. I'm a software developer at Blockchain. And well, what's the 32? Well, I am really, like, core. I just took some guys' libraries no with a command line tool. But what the 32 is, is basically. Okay, first, you, know, you have to understand how you generate 
uh, Bitcoin keys. But for every key pair, like a, the private key the, and the public key, to generate it, you need some randomness. So before, um, how it works right now in Bitcoin D or Bitcoin Core is every time someone, every time you want to generate a key, some randomness, randomness, randomness will be applied. And so, and then from that randomness, you get a different key. You get a different key every time. But so, before the thing that's different about Bit32 is that um, you use a seed, just one, uh, just one, ran uh, one a seed as a randomness, and use that that randomness the seed to generate all of the keys. So the interesting thing about that is you could just by remembering the seed, you could you could generate regenerate all the addresses. So that could be a lot easier with Bit32. And also, um, it is also, also different from another one uh, called Type 2 Deterministic Wallets, which is what Electrum does. Electrum does it the same way with Bit32 with a 12-word 12, 12 passwords. But the, thing, different thing, the, the difference is Bit32 is there, there's some hierarchy to it. Um, you can think of it well, next slide. Okay, if you, the difference between um, how Electrum does it, Actually, I think Electrum does support Bit32 now, but... Yeah, we actually use Electrum here. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Electrum does support it. I think they go into code itself and modify it or something. Mm. I think right out, out of the box, Electrum just does Type 2 Deterministic Wallets. I yeah. Think. I can't be sure, but... Yeah, we use Type 2 Deterministic Wallets. This is a Type 2 Deterministic Wallet. Okay. Yeah. So the difference is, as you can see on the picture right here, you can think of Electrum as... Has, uh, Electron Type 2 Deterministic Wallet is only generating one chain. Like once you know the C, you know all the keys. But it's, it's like a kind of all or nothing kind of thing. If you have the C, you can generate all keys. Also, also, also the public C, too. Um, you can generate all, all public keys, I mean addresses, public keys and addresses. So it's all or nothing, basically. If you have the C, you can generate all the keys. Well, for Bit32, it's possible to just have um, have a partial, have like a partial, uh, well, just look here, um, uh, it's the seeds here, and then from there you can generate, uh, what do you call it, oh, like a key pair, I think so, based on CDK, if CDK stands for, CKD stands for child key, yeah, yeah, yeah. basically, each node, I think it has, uh, it's that, uh, what's called extended, uh, uh, not sure what vocabulary, but uh, extended key, I think. Whenever you generate a node, there's an extended key, extended private key, extended public key. And the, if you have the extended private key, you can generate uh, all the node nodes below. Yeah. Uh, all the extended keys are private key below. So each node has an extended key, private key, and you also generate extended public key. So, so you have the uh, extended key for private key with this one, so you can generate all Bitcoin keys below. If you get the extended um, public key for this, you can generate all public keys below. And let's see what else. Uh, I want to tell. Yeah, basically that's it. And then so yeah. for so, so each node, you can't generate what's above, but you can, you can generate what's below. So in this node, if you get extended, uh, having keep this this note, you can turn all keys below, but not up. Yeah, cool. That's all not interesting. What, what one weakness of Bit32 is is if you, if you know the private key for this for, for this note, say, and the this the standard key for the standard public key for this note, it's possible to generate this. Key. This is a big weakness. So one thing I one interesting thing is. So that's a big weakness for Bit32. So one thing I recommend is not to generate uh, Bitcoin uh, private, use, use uh, private keys on the same level, basically. But yeah, I think that's all I can. That's awesome. Thank you. Right. But yeah, so we're able to essentially generate all the way down, and there are some security issues that Tim pointed out um, in terms of which each of these levels. But for this exercise, we didn't get that detail. We just wanted to make sure that we could actually generate um, about you know ten, I think ten to fifteen Bitcoin. Public addresses uh, for and public and private keys for the wallet. All right, so uh, let's talk about what's wrong with Carbon Wallet um, and why we couldn't use it out of the box for our project. 
Um, first of all, the repo had all the binary releases um, in it. Um, we also noticed that um, I was working on it with Sydney and that the Bitcoin just, uh, Bitcoin JS lib um, versions was uh, not up to date and not minified. And uh, we had a bunch of APIs being called on the app, uh, which were from blockchain, uh, blocker.io, um, even Yahoo um, query APIs, which made it really confusing to see how it would get balances from the addresses. So just trying to figure out how the code was written was a problem uh, for us to understand balances, which made it um, really difficult to just fork and start using. So what we decided to do was call the fact. Um, we just forked the Carbon Wallet and um, we took only the app folder um, in the Carbon Wallet uh, repo, uh, fork that copy, um, then also uh, we call it Bitcoin JS Live Wallet. So uh, when you go into the uh, GitHub for the SF Bitcoin dev, you'll see it. Uh, once we installed NPM, um, had NPM generate for us a minified version of uh, Bitcoin JS Live. I put that into the file, so I'm going to show you what I did here. And now keep in mind, I'm not a programmer, I'm just a little person who, you know, um, plays around a little bit here and there. So let me actually go into the Bitcoin GS Lib Wallet, show you some of the files I started to change. Let's see. So here I put in the minified version of, um, this was their updated version of this, um, Bitcoin Lib JS. And why don't I go to the old one just to show you how it appeared. JavaScript projects, Carbon Wallet. So the car wallet had this entire folder um, of all the Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin libgs files. So instead of doing that, we just minified it. There you go, much better. Um, and also, let me see where else. We still made some changes as well. So um, before car wallet there, blockchain.js file um, with reference here. As you can see, it referenced blockchain and then blocker for getting balances. And then it even went on to query in Yahoo, which is really funky. So we cleaned that up um, and limit. So we just, <laughs> I guess they call this refactoring. <laughs> um, what essentially was a long, um, confusing piece of script for checking balances. Uh, became simply uh, accessing helloblock.io. So if you guys check out mainnet.helloblock.io, um, it's a nice framework that Sydney created um, where we could actually check balances um, and use the API to make calls on the address. And also, uh, we can even have a testnet. So helloblock.io has both mainnet and testnet. So you know, if we wanted to just run um, you know, checking balances on test addresses, we can. All right, and uh, of course, I was able to do that, so this was really cool. Um, Okay, so we removed the blockchain on info, uh, information on some of the, uh, one of the files there. We cleaned out some of the old Bitcoin JS lib libraries, and we decided that, okay, let's go break the app and fix the bugs, right? So we believe that the, the, uh, option, the, ob the objective of this exercise was tar, um, let's go break this app with these improvements, and then bit by bit pull it back together. So this Sunday, that's what we started to do. And I'm gonna have Larry come up here because um, Larry spent like just one hour with this thing and started patching it like a crazy guy. And it was just amazing what he's done um, with it. So Larry Kang, we'll get him up and talk a little bit. And if you wanna switch in and out, you can. Can we welcome Larry, please? I'm a software engineer. I work at Yesware, the sort of the mission district. And uh, yeah, so it was pretty straightforward. Uh, pretty much, um, was, uh, I guess if we just load app.html, um, a project into a browser, you'll start seeing the JavaScript trying to run, and you get errors in the console right away. And that's pretty much what I was trying to do: is just resolve all those errors and just try to get get everything sort of visibly running. Um, with the uh, with, with Bitcoin JS Live, um, so there were some there were some hacks I had to do, like the Bitcoin Live JS Bitcoin JS Live didn't expose the SEC curve by name, 
I wasn't really familiar with Bitcoin JS Live, so I had to go searching through you know, pretty much all the source code on GitHub to be able to find some of these some of these um, functions. Uh, <clears throat> also, secure random. Uh, we needed a random number generator to be able to uh, take to be able to generate a sequence of the 12 words as the seed for for your 32 log. Um, <clears throat> and most of the action actually was in the Electrum. Electrum, uh, not JS file. It's actually a very small file, but that's where all the heavy math is done. And getting the uh, getting the right calls or understanding the parameters of the calls actually took a while. Uh, I could get it so the thing would crash, but then uh, later on I noticed, well, you know, the first ten keys generated, they're all the same key. So something, something <laughs> So <laughs> I had to yeah go back and sort of figure out. Instead of a string, you have to put in a word array. And so basically things like that. And then you have to use Bitcoin JS Live. Um, and uh, whenever I'm working on Bitcoin projects, uh, I find myself writing a lot of tests. And this was a really good opportunity to do that also. So I took uh, what was a carbon wallet and ran that in a browser. And at certain points, made breakpoints, especially at the uh, when Electrum was generating all the keys. Okay? I took the inputs and took the outputs and essentially made a jazz and test out of that. And then I ran against the new version that I was uh, trying to port uh, and eventually got that to run. So I mean, when you're just looking at hex, yeah. Base 58, it's impossible to tell whether you're right or wrong. So I wrote a little test, set of tests, and uh, so that should be probably expanded. At any place where I've made a change, I think there are probably will be a reference test uh, built up around that. To make sure it's actually we still have some questions. Any of us? I were just talking about. Oh, did, did I actually do that? I'm not sure. In a couple other places. And the last thing, uh, well, maybe not the last thing, but this this last thing that's listed here is actually quite important. Uh, callbacks to get balances from hello block. Uh, right now, it's giving back balances on a per Bitcoin address basis, but uh, the uh, the carbon wallet was actually doing a little bit more. It was going to blockchain and pulling down uh, each transaction on an address. So an address could have like ten transactions on it. You need you'll have a TX ID, you'll have a amount, and it was keeping that in an array. And you're going to need actually all those transactions. This one actually lists on the set, you're going you're gonna to pick from these individual transactions to you know, extend those individual outputs. And we didn't get that data from Hello Block? Um, no, right now we're just getting the balance. The, it looks like an aggregate balance from mm -hmm. the address, but we don't seem to have the individual transactions. Where's that Hello Block back? <coughs> <laughs> There's so, a client library, I'll, I'll show you <coughs> how, how it works. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, hello block. I don't understand that API. But apparently, there's uh, within tx.js, they're actually parsing the uh, the blockchain info call going out on this info and storing it in tx.js. So I think that's I, I think that's probably the most important thing to do next. To be able to have a right. Right. So you can see what's going on. Very cool. Cool. All right. Thank you, Larry. So um, why don't I uh, show you guys the demo of the hotness? Um, yeah. All right. Want to see all this heavy lifting? Uh, all right. Let me just uh, make sure. I think uh, we had some merges come up, so I didn't patch. So. Start a new wallet, right? And once we hit start a new wallet, 
uh, our random number generator uh, just was able to give us uh, essentially 12 random words. And I'm just going to highlight them and copy them here. And I'm going to enter the passphrase, which based on bit 32 should generate us a deterministic list of public addresses, public and private keys. Right? So hit open wallet. Da -da 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 Okay, so uh, this is, uh, oh, I still need to patch that part with all that stuff. Um, and if we click on um, receive, you see all the Bitcoin addresses. All right. um, the balances are zero. Whoa. Huh? Whoa. Yeah, yeah, cool, right? And um, you can make a payment to these addresses. So we haven't gotten into much of this yet, but uh, now essentially we have. Uh, a deterministic wallet with uh, public addresses. And like Larry said, the next step is for us to uh, learn how to use HelloBlock.io a little bit better so we can get a list of transactions um, and expense for each of these addresses, not just the ending balance. All right, um, so this is the hotness, and this was, I think, at most maybe three hours of work, um, or four hours in total of work. Um, I know Larry was overnight pulled doing pushes to this, so maybe a little bit more, but uh, really cool that uh, we have this. All right. Um, so now that we've seen the hotness, um, I'm going to bring Shinavasan. Shun I'm going to get it right. And he's going to talk because uh, he also did some pushes last night, and I'm going to have him talk a little bit about what he's been looking at. Hi folks, my name is Srinivasan Srira. I'm relatively new to Bitcoin, so I... How many days have you been in Bitcoin? This is the third, Woo! third, third day. day. Uh, <laughs> really pushing Bitcoin though. But, you know, Tariq has been very, very helpful. So, uh, yesterday I was at the meetup, but I didn't really work on the code, except early, early on, got a brief look at it, and I spent a lot of time talking to all of you. Uh, at night I decided to look at it, and I went into it. My, my editor, I use Vim, and it sort of shows up all the spaces in red, so I said, that's cool, I just pulled out all the spaces. Then I wanted to see the addresses, and I couldn't, I ran it through my inspector, and then I said, okay, uh, basically <coughs> the EV key, EC key was where the issues lie, so I poked into it, and I changed the get Bitcoin address to get address, and a couple of minor changes of that nature, and pretty much that was it. Uh, thanks to Larry here, uh, he had done the hard lift and actually got the, the uh, algorithms to work. All I did was like fix those three little bugs and up it came. Uh, and then merged it in with Larry's stuff. So the fact is it's very easy to get into once you sort of have the uh, hard lifting done, which is really the, shall we say, the secure random piece. Uh, and more importantly, the uh, the uh, the part where you're actually generating the keys. Uh, I poked into hellobloc.io a bit, and uh, I thought that was interesting. I didn't realize that you had to go and get all those transactions. I'll do that later tonight or tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, once we get this to the point where you can actually transact, it will be our trouble. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. I encourage all of you to join. Yeah. Uh, the GitHub repo is really easy to do. I did it. You See, if you join the GitHub repo, you become famous. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now I'm going to bring up Sydney, and uh, Sydney's going to talk a little bit about uh, um, his stuff that he's working on um, with regards. Well, Sydney's working on a lot of stuff, so he's super busy. Um, I'm going to ask Sydney to talk about Secure Random and the pull request we made on Bitcoin JS Lib. Right, because that was the pull request. Oh, right. Uh, decided to not expose it. Okay. Because so it's not a good idea, but there, there's, so we're not there's a lot of turn. It. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to. Uh, there's, there's a better turn to exposing it. Because right. secure random is not going to be in Bitcoin JS for much longer. Okay, got it, got it. Got it. Um, All okay. right, cool. So I'll let you just come up and tell us so, all the um, stuff. So, right now, uh, it's not really secure random because uh, for the uh, for the world code. Um, and I don't know if you guys have been following the congest list. Um, right. And the couple of big pull requests and changes that's confirmed. Basically, there's a, uh, a module with Bitcoin JS list that basically does all of the work. Uh, it basically has a wallet module 
that does all the wallet work that you need. But it's all the electrum. So what we had an electrum. So we can remove all the electrum stuff. Right. Yeah. And basically delete all the and use the congest with it would handle like pretty much everything. Uh, and then and then it's kinda of, you know a little bit of layer on top of it and then a little bit more glue uh, to glue to the engineer up. Um, so there's another repository called C8. Uh, and what that repository is is essentially all the so the you know the water code. Uh, and, and the idea, all oh, right, the idea, so right now um, it's pretty hard to do, for example, the dependency upgrades in, uh, in the current model code because yeah. if you want the upgrade version of Bitcoin JS or upgrade version of Secure End, uh, you basically have to go pull the repo, minify it, and then copy it and paste it into, into your, your wallet code. And so I think there's a, there's a far better way to do it, which is use uh, NPN, which allows you to write front end JavaScript like Node, you know, like normal code that require use the dependencies as the uh, package manager. Uh, and, and, then, and then so you basically have this CA repository that has all the world code, uh, and then you have the, uh, the, the front end repository, which then depends on the, the other repository. And every time, that you upgrade, all you need to do is recompile and then everything's going to work. Uh, and, and you should be able to keep up to the latest dependency really easily this way. Uh, and, and I suspect that Carbon Wallet has real dependency because it's so hard to upgrade dependencies. Uh, and so I think uh, if we do that and we use Browserify going forward, and, and we should have a pretty easy system set up. Um, and so last night I also did a little quick hack demo. Uh, and basically generate a generate a, a wallet with a seed, you know, we'll send some test and points to it and then we'll send it send it out to somewhere else and just basically demonstrate how how you could use um Bitcoin JS lib and this deterministic uh, wallet module to build a wallet. And I think it's uh, it's pretty good. So does your test use the HD wallet stuff in it or how does it uses the HD wallet module. It uses the HD wallet module. Yeah, it does everything. All you need to do is supply the data, yeah. and that's the rest. Yeah. And when you want to set a transaction, all you need to do is create the X, it gives you a hex back, and yeah. then you can do it. Uh, so it, it, it's, uh, it makes it really easy, and, and uh, uh, I think uh, that would be uh, the core of the code, JavaScript code going forward would be in the CA project, and then the core of everything that's to do with front end would be in the, the other repository. Can I demonstrate the, the, new, the new hotness? Oh, oh sure. Yeah, because I think you have it. Okay. So this is a little bit of the code that uh, uh, Sydney wrote for um, this uh, a demo, the demo, a demo branch on um, C8 to demonstrate this. And I'm just going to run it so we don't have to walk through the code. So we just run node index.js. Uh, it starts doing some chemistry. Then it says generate an HD wallet with a seed, generate an address with a seed, <laughs> draw some bitcoins. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, maybe I'm the only person who gets this, but it's doing this automatically. Okay, is anybody else getting it like I am? All right. So it's generating, it's generating an intestinal address. <laughs> it loads the unspent in the wallet, and it sends some money to a, an address. Who's? Okay, is anybody else? I mean, am I the only person who this tickles? Because this is cool. All right, so you don't believe me? All right, so let's go to the address he put in here. We all put it here, right? And let's see what that looks like. That's really cool. The, 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 okay, right. Oh, we just sent some money. We just sent some money. Right. Like we we we, we, did, we start from nothing. Oh, well, that's, that's the future. Then we have that's money. the future of, of, of the clones. Ah, that, that's the future of. of the, the, the this report. is the future of internet money. Like truly, internet money should start from pressing a button. Okay, I have to say this is not real. Like this is this is money. money. But, but like there's no money. Right. But you no money was at risk any time. Right. But the point is, is that. Like today, there are no applications that you just press a button and it starts generating transactions you know, that you can then control, right? So literally, here you have an example where... For tipping, uh, GitHub is huge. Huge, exactly, exactly. Tipping would be huge. Like you, okay, all right, I'm having an emotional moment because this is huge. I've never seen anything like this, right? So um, then what you did, it like just what, a few hours last night? Uh, literally 10, 15 minutes and then... Okay, okay, 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, just the in case you thought it was too long. <laughs> Right, 
so hello block, we have the trans we have a confirmation. Um, this is April 15th, so I guess that's tomorrow, but total inputs, total outputs, fees. That's UT UTC. UTC time, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Amount was spent uh, 0.003 bitcoins, and uh, here's the inputs, the outputs. It's done. And that took, what, like three seconds. So um, I think this is awesome. And if we could put it, more of this cool stuff into our wallet, um, it would be really, really Can we cool. just briefly walk through those steps? Yes, so please. Right, right. Oh, um. Okay. But no, 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 no. Oh, right. Yeah, I know generator Okay, so obviously that's not a random C. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, um, basically, <laughs> what it does is it's a, uh, it's a little hack. Uh, what 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 it uh, what what the, the the basically the way the code works is uh, the world module takes uh, a, a C, uh, which is the result of SHA two fifty six, and so you you, you provide a, a random string uh, and that generates a C, and that's always the always C. Given the same, uh, given the same uh, seed, sorry, given the same string to the same seed, that generates a wallet, and then you know that starts to generate addresses. Uh, the rest of it is just basically uh, interfacing with API. And API is a faucet, uh, which means that there's an API point where you can hit it, and it gives you some coins so you can play with it. Yep. Otherwise, yeah. you know, you've got to mine your own test next time. Hello, block is a faucet. Uh, no, it's an API, but it's got a, got a faucet. So the faucet. Test, yeah. uh, and and so then. So that address generated some actual yeah. coins. No, that address didn't generate some actual coins. I he just the API the generated coins yeah, exactly. and then sent some to you uh, so that you can test with it. Uh, and so that's and then the rest of it's pretty simple. It's basically ask the faucet for some money. So now in your new address, now you got some testnet coins to play with. Yes. And then the rest is kind of the normal step, which is you go get a spend, load up and spend to a wallet, and say, hey, create a transaction. And then that gives you a hex, which is what the transaction is, and then you go and propagate it to the network, right. and then you can see it. And, see it. and I think a lot of people don't realize, Sydney and I talked about this last Sunday, most developers on Bitcoin do not run tests on testnet. Right? They just run it on mainnet. So here you have... And you can see how Wallet definitely did not... They didn't do it, right, exactly. <laughs> so here you have a full loop where Block API can get you your testnet points, and you could actually test what your application is supposed to do with the money so that you can even show that the test runs before you ship the code. I mean, I've been watching, I mean, I, I, I'm on the MasterCoin project, I'm on a lot of other projects, nobody runs <coughs> tests, like in testnet, everybody's running off of mainnet, so it's just amazing that at least, you know, this type of avenue is available. Like, you can test the entire application loop. That's... Huge. It's funny, because my friend was doing a wallet app. He had a little bug, occasionally we send out entire wallet as fees. And so you just thought, oh, where, where did all this money go? No, uh, that, that, was a, that was a $15 fee. Oh. <laughs> Oopsie, all right. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, money. I've been there. I've <laughs> lost lots of money on, on testing apps in the internet. Yeah. I guess you dedicate about like, 100 bucks. Then. Yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. Alright, so this is an invitation for you guys. Um, if you're interested in working on a project, uh, we're going to use this HD wallet as our project for the rest of April. Um, it's, uh, we have a repo we created yesterday called GitHub SF Bitcoin Devs. Uh, the next two Sundays, we're going to be improving the wallet. So we're going to be working together to again remove the bugs. Um, this is a great way to get visibility um, and your name on a cool Bitcoin project. So, you know, it helps with the resume. Um, great way to get a wallet for your own projects. Um, I think everybody needs a wallet if you're going to dev, um, and this is a great way to get one. And uh, this has proven a great way to also meet other Bitcoin devs and you know find out what people are working on, find out whether or not you guys share interests. Um, one of the things that's been tough for us as the, the SF devs hacking Sundays is to find something we all want to work on. So um, this is, I think, a really cool project for us to work on that will get visibility globally. Um, also, uh, once we're done in April, we're going to do a, maybe a little announcement, maybe something on Coindesk, some press, uh, so that people get some more attention on Reddit and say, hey, this project is not alive. Anybody can fork it and enjoy it. All right, um, so you can add, if you're not interested in the HD wallet, you can add your own projects in repo. Uh, Jonathan added his Scala ACA implementation of the Bitcoin uh, client, which was pretty impressive. Um, so he's looking for folks who are interested in working on that. You can do so as well. 
Um, and um, if you want to work on something else in the, and you submit it to the repo, hack on it on Sunday and you can present on it on Monday. All right. Cool. So I think that is it. Any questions? Not everybody all at once. I'll, I'll make a comment. If, if anyone is new to Bitcoin and wants to learn a little bit about, more about Bitcoin, I think Wallet is probably the best place to start. I think it is as the best first place to start. Yes. Because you learn about addresses, you learn about prototype keys, uh, you learn about all the like uh, the crypto stuff. Even yesterday, Larry and I were learning on stuff on crypto. So as a uh, Shrinivasan, and um, I think we learned. I learned quite a bit just going through this exercise um, and getting it working. Also testing, like test on Bitcoin de development. Um, I think this is the first time we've seen. You know, I'm seeing tests actually happen. So um, I think it's a great way to also, if you're a test driven developer, to learn some of that as well. All right. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right.